double Q or E or something? I know the back row, it's kind of. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the December 11th River Falls City Council meeting. First thing we'll do is stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, Christy, can I have a roll call, please? Beerstead. Here. Downing. Here. Gagne. Here. Morissette. Here. Odin. Here. Page. Here. Watson. Here. Okay, next for our approval of minutes from the November 27th meeting. Move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, next uh, approval of the bills with Mr. Downing. Mr. Mayor and Council, I found a duplicate check and the total amount of the original figure we had, and I verified that, so we subtracted that $32 for, so with that, I moved for the correct uh, amount of the bills uh, for $883,524.12, subject to the controller. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, next would be public comments. If there's anybody in the audience has anything like to say, stand up, now would be the time. Come on up. Oh my gosh, my name's right here already. <clears throat> uh, my name is Jeff Bjork, and like I said, my name's already here. So two weeks ago, I was here to talk to you, and I brought up something about the um, the dams and the FERC licensings and. And, um, and I questioned something, and I, I, what I want to do is publicly thank Dan, Mayor Dan Tolan for getting back. Um, I know everybody else had the chance to get back too, but Mayor Dan did communicate back to me, um, Sean, and Todd did too, so thank you both to you too. But uh, Mayor Dan, I want to thank you for the communication you gave back, saying that, yes, the city is relicensing both facilities, both dams, and that at one time or in some time in the future that the lower dam will be decommissioned after we go through that process and we make sure that fundings are there and that once we know that things are in place then we'll start to do that decommissioning so i appreciate it getting that clarification and knowing this is the last night that we have public tv there'll be a bunch of people that um will be in the dark or in the black before the, without um, um after this not knowing how to do youtube so um People, we have it. I mean, it is right. We are um, both dams are going to be relicensed, and at some time in the future, there'll be a decommissioning. So, Mayor Dan, thank you much for clarifying that. I appreciate it, and I know you checked with um, Kevin Westhouse too on this, and that's understanding, and that's what was voted for back in February. And thank you very much. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks, Chef. Anybody else in the audience have something? Okay, we will move on to, uh, we have a report from our Fellowship Unity and Networking Committee, which is our fund committee. Um, I was going to tell you who's giving a report, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to give away the secret. <laughs> All right, good evening, Ma so, Mayor and Council. Uh, fund committee, as it says up there, we're Fellowship Unity and Networking uh, Group in the City of River Falls. We've had different people come on and off the committee. But as you see, the, the members are up there on the board. Hold on, here we go. Um, First, uh, we'll go from uh, November last year. We had our uh, holiday party last December. Uh, it's basically a potluck. Everybody brings something to share, and of course, the council's always invited. Uh, one of the things we did last year is we, everyone brought a present, and then we shook dice, and you had to get doubles in order to pick a present. Once they got done with that, we shook, shook doubles again. You could swap and steal from each other. Everybody enjoyed that one very much. Also, in December last year, we did the elf on the shelf just with each department decorating up uh, you know, the elves, I think we actually ended up getting, getting two of them because some of the other uh, buildings wanted to do the elf on the shelf. And we had a good time with that. Um, we did the sharing families. Last year, I think the, we only sponsored two families. Just that's what we picked up as far as uh, people supporting it. This year, I think we we're going to have, uh, I think we did three families and more of the departments. It's, it's the citywide. Some of the other buildings give money here, but it kind of set up mainly here at City Hall. Uh, January bowling, we had about uh, 20 participants. Some were uh, 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 employees and their families. 
it was a good time. A little pizza was served, and we just did different, different competitions in the bowling. Our soup competition is usually done every year for, uh, they call it the Super Bowl, you know, potluck or competition. And, of course, last year, uh, who was first place? Uh, Trish from the police department. Mr. Ronsky back here. I don't know. I think his wife made it, but he took credit for it. <laughs> Uh, we did cribbage in February. Uh, Gordy, I think, is a tough cribbage player, aren't you, Gordy? Or is it Euchre? I forget which one you come to. But we do, uh, we do cribbage, and it's anywhere from 8 to 12 people show up. Again, council could show up at it. We serve pizza, have a little cribbage tournament. It's a good time by all. Uh, Relay for Life. You know, we it's support the Relay for Life. We do a, a silent auction, and we have done a live auction. I can't remember if we did a live auction last year. And that's potluck, so it's... You know, contribute if you don't have a live uh, an auction item. Just come and spend some money, and we generated what 1,600. I can't really see my eyes are bad today, cross-eyed, <laughs> uh, but it's up there. Uh, March, euchre. We do euchre too. I think uh, euchre came after cribbage, but there are enough people that like to play euchre now. Uh, Crystal Raleigh, she's won it the last two years, but that's because I didn't play last year, and I think she <laughs> cheats. So just you know, ask her how her euchre is. Uh, April is uh, canvas painting. We've done this on and off. We'll switch out every now and then, but this last year we thought we'll do canvas painting again. John was the best painter there, as you can see, uh, John Albart. But uh, it's an enjoyable time just to get together. It's, an, again, a reason. Part of what we do is a lot of these activities that sometimes at work, sometimes it's out of work just to get to know each other in different departments. Uh, dessert competition. We have them every year now. Uh, uh, who am I thinking there? Monica, she usually is uh, the winner every year, but I think one year she got bumped out. And then up front, Cindy did very well. But it's, it's a lot of good sweets if you like sweets. Uh, kayaking, that's kind of an up and down weather dictates it. Uh, but it's a good time there, too. We just jump up. Uh, where road do we go to? Quarry? Liberty? Highway 65, jump off there, and it's about an hour. Kayak down, and we have a little pizza and enjoy each other's companies. Unless you get dumped, then it's kind of a bummer. Uh, the employee picnic, now I know some of the council members came last year, participated as well as served us. We appreciate that, but we have the cooks that a lot of times like to sit and make the food for it. And then we have just games for people. And again, good time, a lot of good food. It's potluck, and then the city provides the meat. Uh, school supply night, uh, this is, a, I think they served 320 kids last year. And of that, uh, uh, and then 320 kids went through it. And the people that organize it really appreciate the city of River Falls because they, uh, they had a quite, a quite a big showing. I should go back one. There we go. Quite a few people participate and help walk the kids through it, and they really appreciate the large uh, number of employees that show up from the city of River Falls. Halloween costume. Scott's, uh, I've always had to ask Scott, and Scott always says, yeah, we can do a Halloween costume as long as it's office appropriate. We haven't had anyone sent home so far. And as you can see, coffee and donuts to the cops, that's hard to believe, so <laughs> that's Gordy. Uh, and then the winners this year were uh, uh, Ellen, she dressed up as uh, Hank, the electric guy, and then electricity was Cindy up front. Uh, and that's about it. Any questions? Not. thank you very much. Um, I, 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 you know, I'd, I'd like to really... You guys don't get enough credit as far as kind of concerned for all the stuff you guys do, not just a lot of stuff you do is for employees to keep the employees happy and you do a lot of fun stuff for them, but a lot of stuff you guys do is for the community too. And you guys create a lot of warmth out there with all the different community stuff you guys do. So I personally really greatly appreciate everything you guys do. So thanks very much. Um, okay, next on to the election update. And our deputy clerk, Jackie, is going to give us a, a report. All right. Well, good evening, mayor and council and residents of city. My name is Jackie Sano. I work with Amy White in the clerk's office, and I'm the deputy clerk. So tonight I'm just going to do a quick update on the 2018 election and the upcoming spring election. In 2018, we had five elections. We started in January with a special election. Then we had the spring primary, the spring election, the partisan primary, and we finished the year with the general election. And this slide, and just showing the voter participation, 
Um, we're comparing the 2018 election to its equivalent election from a previous year. For example, in the general election or the midterm election, in 2014, there were 7,858 registered voters. Of those registered voters, 4,508 people voted, which gave us a 57% voter turnout. In 2018, there were 8,838 registered voters. Of those registered voters, 6,176 people voted, which gave us a 70% voter turnout. We have five polling locations, um, and like I had said, 8,838 active registered voters in the city, and we have 67 poll workers. Now I'm going to be covering our 2019 spring election and the candidacy requirements for local offices. The offices that are up for election in, the April, 2000 and in April 2019 are Alderperson at Large, Alderperson District 1, Alderperson District 2, and Alderperson District 3. The candidacy requirements for Alderperson at Large, you must be a qualified elector of the city and reside in the city at the time of the election. For alderperson by district, you must be a qualified elector of the city and aldermatic district and reside in the district at the time of the election. The filing requirements, um, you must turn in a campaign registration statement, a declaration of candidacy, and nomination papers. The requirements on the nomination papers for alderperson at large, it requires 100 to 200 signatures. The signatures may be from any eligible voting resident within the city limits. And for alder person by district, it's 20 to 40 signatures. The signatures must be from an eligible voting resident within that aldermatic district. Some important dates to remember. December 1st was the first date for the first day for candidates to start circulating nomination papers. December 21st is the last day for incumbents not seeking re-election to file a notification of non-candidacy with the clerk's office. And January 2nd is the last day for candidates to file candidate papers with the clerk's office for the spring election. Forms and other information can be found by visiting our website or by contacting the clerk's office. Any questions? I do have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> it, so when somebody comes forward and puts all their papers in, um, do they have to be a resident of that district the day of the election? Or do they need to live in that district 10 days, 30 days prior to? Yep, I believe it's 10 days. And they have to reside in the city at least 10 days before the election. Thank you. My, mine's more of a comment than a question. Hopefully, you know, with all the, with all the early voting we have now and all the absentee ballot voting now, Hopefully we can keep our numbers up as far as peop the amount of people that actually do vote in the city. In the city. Um, Cause it's, it's so easy now. It's kind of ridiculous how it's so easy. Mm -hmm. But so hopefully, hopefully we can keep our polling numbers up. Otherwise, thanks for the report. Thank you. Okay, next, um, uh, let's see, what do we got? We got our IMCA fellows program and that's gonna come from our management analyst, Jason. Can give us a little report on that. See, the room clears as soon as I start talking. Yeah. <laughs> You're no fun at all. That's good to have that ability sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Jason Roloff, and I'm here to give you a little... Oh, wait. Did it, uh, there we go. <coughs> yep, there we go. So, yep, yeah, uh, I'm here to give you the uh, little bit of a breakdown of the Management Analyst Fellow Program that we have here in the city of River Falls. Uh, we've been sponsoring this program for... Uh, about eight, nine years now, uh, since 2010. So just gonna give you a little bit of an overview of what the program entails, why we have it, and things like that. So the uh, city partners with the International City County Management Association through their Local Government Management Fellowship Program. Uh, the LGMF program has been around since 2004. Uh, 80 different organizations across the country, <coughs> excuse me, have um, participated in this program uh, since then. Uh, on any given year, about 30 to 40 different organizations host one or more fellows. Um, we've had the fortunate opportunity to have um, both one and two fellows throughout the history of our participation in it. Uh, this is a very selective uh, program that uh, recruits both uh, recent and soon-to-be master's students from public administration, public policy, uh, programs like that to participate in the program. 
So the fellowship here in the city, uh, management analyst fellows are under the general direction of the city administrator and assistant city administrator. Uh, fellows perform tasks across all different departments uh, in support of the city's established goals and objectives. So some other project examples we have here are uh, the fellows help create uh, public budget documents and the capital improvement plan updates. Uh, the city community flag design, which Carrie was uh, the lead on that one when she was a fellow. Uh, the utility business plans, which you're going to see the water one tonight. Uh, infrastructure report card, uh, preparing RFPs, uh, applying for various grant and award submissions, and policy analysis implementation, <clears throat> excuse me, among other things. Um, this is a very comprehensive uh, fellowship, in my opinion. I've gotten quite a bit out of it, and these uh, different types of projects are some of the examples that I see as uh, very beneficial to my personal uh, professional development. So we've had 10 different fellows that have come through the city since the program started. Um, they've come from all over the uh, country and have gone on to very uh, different things, both in administrative roles and in um, more specialized roles. Um, and as you can see, we have uh, people all over the country. We have uh, Texas, California, a couple different places in Wisconsin, um, and some that have stuck around here. They've gotten hired on after their fellowship, Branton Carey being the most recent ones. Um, so it's really good for me to see that uh, the fellowship does foster some pretty good talent and does lead to some pretty amazing uh, things for people. So what's next? Uh, we have one fellowship position budgeted in 2019 and 2020 uh, with the funding coming from administration's budget. Uh, the LGMF program is currently accepting applications and will do so through this Friday. Um, ICMA will then uh, review those applicants and then we'll provide a list of the fellows to us to review and to set up interviews uh, sometime in January or February. Uh, interviews are anticipated to occur in February, March with the new management analyst fellow starting with the city in June of 2019. So uh, I just want to take a minute to thank you for your support of the program. I've really gotten a lot out of it and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity that uh, the mayor and council have given and the support that staff has given me and the fellows that have come through here. So. Thank you. Um, anybody got any questions for Jason? Jason, what's next for you? Yeah, I was just we'll see. Oh, no, <laughs> no I, I know, I, I, there's got to be some pressure on you because obviously everybody since before you has gone on to good things. It makes me happy that they've gone on to good okay. things because that so means I, hope, I, I hope know, you have a good, there's good track record. <laughs> but we do we do expect a lot out of you guys, and we following the program like you said we've we've been very lucky. You guys have all done wonderful work for us and have gone on to do wherever they've gone have done good work for the st cities and towns so okay. absolutely we appreciate it well Thank jason's you. standing there too i just want to mention you know we we appreciate the council's uh we've talked about this at different times in the budget process but obviously you know we hire consultants and get studies done on a regular basis and one of the you know one of the just cost benefits of this program has been that we're using these fellows to do do studies they're doing multiple studies each year they're here which is which is resulting in some some cost savings we're doing it because we we want to get a get a um, early glimpse at good talent in the organization and and we're recruiting always um, just a, just a snapshot we always we ask each fellow to eliminate one unnecessary ordinance because they're always asked to do new ordinances because plan commissions and other people come up with good ideas but one of the things they do always is have to come up with uh, eliminating an ordinance, um, obtaining at least one grant. And what the main thing about this program is we want them to reach the point where they're so overwhelmed because they're in big demand across all departments. So that's it's really a benefit for, because of the size of our organization, it does give us some some flexibility or shock absorption across different departments with these, these positions. So in particular, Jason was successful in obtaining um, he was the author and, and um, obtained the grant for the Falls Theater Project uh, through the state of Wisconsin. So typically, uh, I don't know that we made that a requirement yet, but it might be a good idea in the future. But typically, they bring in grant money that exceeds the, uh, the salary investment we have in them. But it also helps, and they help in a number of ways. So we appreciate, um, obviously, they, they bring some enthusiasm um, to City Hall, which is, which is a good thing, too. Mm. So thanks. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Okay, next. Um, I got some bad news and some good news. I'll give you the good news first. The good news is uh, one of our uh, police officers, Officer Greg Lotze, is retiring after almost 40 years with the city. 
Greg, if you're watching, thank you for everything you've done. He's He's been an immense uh, plus for the city. Sunday will be his last day. Um, I was put up to this, Greg. He didn't want anything to do with this. He doesn't want any kind of recognition or anything. So, But I, I think after 40 years, you deserve a lot more than this. So I greatly appreciate it. And the bad news is, is that Officer Lotzi's retiring. So um, that's about it. I greatly appreciate everything he's done for us. So, um, yeah. Okay, next, move on to, uh, we'll close the public hearing, and, or we'll close the council and open up a public hearing on a uh, request for a combination Class B liquor and Class B beer license uh, f for um, Bros Sports Bar LLC is switching over to Sports Bar, Sports, Bros Sports Bar and Grill at 127 South Main Street. Is there anybody in the audience has anything like to say about this? Okay. We'll close the public hearing and re-up the council hearing, and I'll open it up for a, a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that uh, we approve the request for the combination Class B liquor and Class B beer license for Bros Sports Bar, LLC. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I normally ask my typical three questions of agents, but since Mr. Robinson is already an agent and has already been grilled intensively by me <laughs> uh, in the past, uh, I will not ask my questions. Okay. Anybody else? Otherwise, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next, move on to the consent agenda. Uh, number one is a resolution approving termination of tax increment district number seven and authorizing treasurer to distribute excess excess increment to qualifying taxic ta cheapers, <laughs> taxing districts um, and this what would this would do it would be uh, terminate the, uh, the city's district uh, TID district number seven which is located near Clark Clark and uh, Cedar streets and it's right here actually next door next to um, City Hall so I'll entertain a motion on that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the resolution approving termination of tax increment. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, no. First, I, does anybody want to pull anything? Oh. <laughs> nope. Go ahead. Sorry. I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. <laughs> There's only one thing on the consent agenda. I get mm -hmm. confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Call? I just wanted to point out, it's been corrected in the version that was passed out this evening, but there was the one that was posted online. The, the agenda item said determination instead of termination, but that's been mm -hmm. corrected here, and I don't think there's any problem in approving this. The way it is. Okay. So I have a f first from Diane. Did I get a second one? Second. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments? Just clarification, because this is, do we need a, do we need a roll call because it's a, because of the budget piece or the money piece? No. Oh, because okay. the tax, please? Yep. Okay. Uh, so no questions. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next move on to ordinances resolution. Uh, first one is a resolution supporting an affordable mixed income workforce housing development at 700 Main Street. Uh, this is for um, 700 Main Street is the old McEwen property and uh, and this is a, this this will only this development will only take place if the people are applying for the low income housing tax credits were to receive that and then they would work on a developer's agreement with us. So I will take a motion on that. We've got a Is Amy gonna present? Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. <laughs> sorry. Yes, I've been looking forward to this all day. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you I have. I can't believe I forgot, I'm so excited. <laughs> Mayor and Council, I was just going to summarize briefly um, the project that you have before you tonight at 700 South Main or the McEwen property. Um, you saw this last year and it's back again um, with a number of refinements. So the developer Cohen Esri listened to you last year as well as listened to the plan commission this year and made some substantial changes to the development. So. There are, uh, there's 59 units currently proposed here, which will allow for the complex to meet the uh, current zoning parking ordinance. So those spaces will be provided. Um, they did change the design as well. So you've got a picture in your packet. This is the view from the south looking north. Um, so a different design as well to hopefully fit 
better in with the community, the neighborhood in that area. Um, the ask is a bit different as well, more conventional to what you're used to as a pay-as-you-go TIF, um, asking for $1 million over 10 years. And uh, a change just recently is that the developer will wo work with a local veterans organization to target eight of the units specifically to veterans um, in need of low to moderate income housing. So those are the major changes before you. Um, the developer, Mr. Sweeney, is here if you have specific questions for him. Otherwise, the resolution before you, again, is in support of the application to WIDA. Um, the developer's agreement, the TID creation, and design review would come if the project is funded and moves forward. I just got a couple. Yep. Go <clears throat> so something I asked Scott this morning, and I just want to clarify for the folks at home, I know it clearly says in there that there's a million dollar um, kit rebate essentially to the developer over the course of 10 years. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in, in the clarification I got this morning that they're going to end up getting their tax bill they're going to end up getting, if they're paying their taxes at the $5 million valuation that, they've, that they'd be agreeing to, they're going to get a 90% kickback for 10 years up to $1 million. Does that sound correct? That sounds correct, yes. Okay. So we're not just handing out cash. This is going to be over the course of 10 years, correct. and it's going to be incentives for them to put into that project, essentially put money back into our, pro they our city. They would only get uh, a rebate if the taxes are paid. Right. So it's, it's essentially 90% of the taxes that they pay. And that money that they're getting is specifically going back into the project? Or is it a rebate for the project that they're doing? It's for the money time? that they're putting in up front. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thank you. From my understanding, <clears throat> from my understanding um, after 30 years, the developer, developer retains the rights uh, to the building itself, correct? The, the developer owns the property. Yeah. Um, it is in the WIDA program for 30 years. Yep. And then they can raise the prices after that, correct? Correct. Okay. I just have one comment, too, if I could. Um, I remember being uncomfortable with this a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Now that we have our housing study done, yeah. I feel a lot more comfortable with this. Yeah. So that, in my mind, gave us some value to look at a project like this a little more intelligently. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good housing for the city. And the one thing we have to remember, too, is we're just, we're just saying, you know what, if you can get your tax credits, then you can come back, and then they can go through the whole process of right. going through the developers and working with staff to, yep, you can do this, nope, we want that, you nope, we want this. But so that's really what this is about, so... Yes, Mr. Mayor. There was one other thing that I asked for clarification out of this this morning in my one-on-one -on -one with Scott was the two places per unit, and that wasn't previously in the discussion um, a year ago mm -hmm. in this developer plan, and that was something that was brought up by one of the council. Um, and I think that's an important addition because that neighborhood is pretty tight on parking anyway with all the student housing that's around there. And I know this speci this building and uh, rental property won't be student housing, but it's definitely going to be a concern. So I think that's a great addition that we're going to add sufficient parking mm -hmm. to meet code. Good. I can expound on Mr. Gagne's comments. <laughs> Mr. Sweeney, uh, I appreciate you taking the feedback, both from the Plan Commission. Um, you know, the project uh, would be a great project for us. Um, but I really appreciate you taking the feedback, and I know it's been a little bit of a longer process than maybe you're used to, but... Uh, um, it's a great looking project. Uh, the fact that we've got the parkings kind of squared away, um, I, I really appreciate you keeping at it with this and, and, and doing what you need to do. So uh, from a developer standpoint, I know sometimes it's not always easy, but this is a, this will be a nice project and good luck with the tax credits. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? You know, I, I appreciate the sentiment of what we're doing, and I think it's great that we're focusing on affordable housing, but I think we're going to have to work on legislation that goes further than just uh, one plan like this. Personally, I see 12 of these particular uh, units here that are affordable. The rest of them, I think, are fairly just market rate, in my opinion. So I'm going to be voting against this. People can vote okay. how they want, but that's my opinion. Anybody else? All in favor? Nope. Yep. Oh, I move I move approval. Oh, <laughs> of the res I don't think we've got a motion. Oh, we don't. Um, oh. I move approval of the resolution supporting development of workforce housing at 700 South Main Street. Second. 
Okay, so I did everything backwards in that one, sorry. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay, next move on to resolution approving the 2019 through 2023 water business plan. <coughs> and uh, J Jason Roloff and Brant Johnson are gonna give us a little presentation on this. So hello again. Uh, yep, so uh, Brant and I are gonna be giving you a little bit of an overview of the proposed 2019 to 2023 water business plan. Um, this is just to give you guys an idea of what's in the packet and uh, hopefully you guys will support it after we're done with this. <clears throat> so the purpose of the plan is to identify strategies to help guide RFMU uh, uh, effectively and responsibly operate the utility for the next five years. So we did this through different analysis, uh, looking at different goals and objectives that we wanted to get and uh, doing a financial breakdown to give us an idea of where we're at and, what we're, and where we need to go with this plan. So some quick facts and figures. Uh, we have about 4,700 uh, different customers in our uh, water system. Uh, in 2017, they used just under 400 million gallons of water. And uh, the other big thing that I think is kind of noteworthy is that 100% of our uh, water comes from uh, groundwater. Uh, we draw from three different aquifers, so uh, we have a very good base for uh, where we draw our water from. <clears throat> So uh, the basis for this water business plan was um, we conducted a SWOT analysis. So this was uh, identifying the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and trends of the water utility, both uh, using internal and external stakeholders to give us a, a well-rounded idea of where we're at and what we're doing well and things that we may need to improve on to uh, make the water utility um, a little bit better. So off of the SWOT analysis, we were able to create this operational resiliency page. Um, oh. Uh, this, uh, we use this to identify different services and outcomes that are kind of uh, the broad range sort of things that go into the water utility. We look at how that benefits the customers and then we identified ways in which we can measure it over the next five years to make a, to give us a benchmark of where we're at and how we can um, uh, benchmark ourselves for that. <clears throat> Moving on to the financial section, uh, this graph kind of gives you an idea of um, the types of uh, current and future capital improvement investments we're going to be making. Uh, so the life of this business plan runs from 2019 to 2023. Uh, we just wanted to give you guys a, a good understanding of where we're investing our money and how much is going to be spent in the next um, uh, eight years or so. Uh, as you can see, there's a big spike in 2026, so that's going to be something that we uh, need to look at and something that went into uh, our considerations for uh, how we're planning out for uh, uh, our projected rates. So the big thing we got out of this was the uh, water utilities change in net position is expected to remain positive up to 2022 with the current rates, um, at which point the change in net position is projected to run negative if no action is done to the rates before then. Uh, it's recommended from our analysis that uh, the water utility apply to adjust its rates uh, through a sim either a simplified rate case or a conventional rate case uh, through the Public Service Commission uh, before 2022. A simplified rate case would need to occur on or before 2021. Um, this is because we had a conventional rate case done in 2016 and the PSC only gives a five-year window to do a simplified rate case. Um, in order to qualify for a simplified rate case, we would need to be below their authorized uh, rate of return. Uh, if the water utility does not qualify for a simplified rate case, then the utility may, may apply for a conventional rate case. Uh, we've done this, uh, I believe, a couple times in the past, uh, most recently in 2016. Um, that would be a little more of a comprehensive look at um, how the water utility is uh, run, and we'd also need to do a, um, a, a cost of service study along with that, which would need to help determine how our rates are. So kind of putting it all together, what it all means, uh, we want to review our rates yearly and ensuring f uh, fiscal responsible practices are done in order to maintain and expand our water system. Uh, we want to be able to construct a water asset management plan that tracks and identifies improvements for the utility, uh, its infrastructure, and uh, making sure that we're on tr track for um, improving the water system. Uh, connecting more with customers, uh, specifically through engagement opportunities, both uh, physical, in person, and um, online through different uh, online mechanisms. So with that, Brant and I will take any of your questions. Anybody have any questions? Well, yep. just, just the, the two spikes in 2022 and 2026, what are we anticipating there? So in 2022, that's when we're looking at the uh, North uh, Water Tower, and that's about a $2 million investment right there. And then the other investments um, from 2019 to 2022, that's mostly vehicle expenses and for the capital improvement plan and then with 2026, that that's like a combination of a uh, couple of big expenditures. Yeah, I can't remember all of them off the top um, of my head, but quite a few. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? So I, I'd like to commend our utility staff and our water staff. We had a couple uh, water main breaks, unfortunately, just like every other city deals with this time of the year with the cold temperatures and the ground freezing and, you know, aging infrastructure. And that's something that we've talked about over the years. And, you know, I think this is a great uh, step in the right direction of getting a business plan together for our water utility. And what I was going to say is I'd like to commend our utility staff for jumping on board and making sure that we're lining up the right people and the right staff to get out there. Um, we just had one on today that was ripped up on South Main Street right near Cascade there. And uh, they went out. You guys organized the concrete crews that you needed to find and get out there today and um, got out and got that project done. And you can see there's asphalt there. And looks like you buttoned that all up. Yeah, it, it took an, uh, about an hour longer than we thought. The main that was broken was sitting on bedrock. And we had to chisel out some of the bedrock to get a clamp underneath the main to lift it up. So it took a little longer, but they did get that done mid-afternoon today. So not an easy dig. It wasn't an easy dig. Yeah. Good job on the utility staff. And like I said, I think this is a good step in the right direction. And we really need to be focusing on the things that are not necessarily seen but unseen. I think far too often as a community, not just our community, in any community, you can focus on the things that you can see all the time, but you forget about all the pipes and water and um, sewers and everything else under the ground that might be aging but why are they charging your utility bill for that and what can we be doing in the future to be making sure that we can prevent these uh, water main breaks so, thanks okay. anybody else um, I'm just wondering how many more business plans you two have <laughs> <laughs> sewer sewer yeah sewer. okay excellent well thank you for your work on this <laughs> thank you yeah okay I move approval of the resolution approving the 2019 20 yep. 23 water business plan. Second. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next, we move on to reports. The administrator's report. If anybody's got anything for Scott, or Scott, you got anything for us? A couple notes. Thank you, Council. Um, this is the the last scheduled meeting of the year for City Council. Uh, city offices are closed in observance of the holidays for. December 24th and 25th and also on January 1st um, the next meeting of the City Council is January 8th 2019 um, as was mentioned this is the last televised uh, simulcast meeting on cable um, television we'll be switching over to the digital format and um, and streaming and we have court uh, councils received a memo in the past about uh, efforts we've made at nursing homes and other places to to continue the broadcast there um, we did receive what we considered a pretty late notice on a public meeting um, tomorrow by the, the Wisconsin DOT, and that's for their project on Wisconsin 29. Um, so we apologize for the late notice, but y you knew as soon as we knew um, that there was a meeting tomorrow. So we're going to try to get some staff to that meeting. Um, as you know, the council has made it clear that um, we'd like to do a roundabout at double FF. Um, the other elements of the project is, as far as we're concerned, the staff are proceeding well. Um, the, the eastern sections of Cemetery Road are in terrible condition. The project's definitely needed. Um, we're in agreement with the DOT on a number of the treatments that they expect to do. This is part of an ongoing agreement. We have a jurisdictional um, agreement uh, for that connecting highway through that runs across uh, what is what is this city street for a good portion of it um, and so we're, that meeting is 5 to 7 p.m. at the River Falls High School um, tomorrow night for the public um, <coughs> our staff did reach out to um, as many of the adjacent property owners that we were aware of or had information for um, on behalf of the DOT and we also contacted the uh, town of River Falls that that was not aware of the project so um, we'll Hopefully, get a little bit, get a little better um, work from the DOT on communication. But like I said, on the project design management, I think we're generally in agreement with what they're proposing, with the exception of a significant disagreement about uh, appropriate um, construction method for uh, the intersection with County Double F. Um, other than that, there's a number of items uh, that are covered in the uh, the packet. Uh, Appreciate the support of the council for this year um, and understand that uh, 
You'll get a little bit of a break from council meetings, but uh, we'll still have city staff here 24-7, 365 to, to uh, provide services to the community, and we're proud to do that. Um, and let's hope that the uh, snow season stays as mild as it has so far. Be good for our, good for our budget and good for everybody getting out and about. Okay, anybody else have anything? Okay, uh, next we got some announcements. Uh, I'd like to make one appointment that I hope the, the council would look favorably on. I'd like to reappoint uh, Jane Hoffman through January of, of 2022 to the Historic Preservation Commission. Mr. Mayor, I move approval of your <coughs> appointment of Jane Hoffman to the HPC. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next we will recess in a closed session per Wisconsin State Statute 19.851 IE for the following purposes. Deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. To wit, the public safety buildings. Mr. Mayor, I move we recess into closed session. Second. Christy, can we have a roll call, please? Gagne? Yes. Page? Yes. Beerstead? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Downing? Yes. Odine? Yes. Watson? Yes. Reed, are you going to be there tomorrow night? Are you going to be there tomorrow night? Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>